welcome back to another episode of the chiropractic student podcast thank you everyone for coming back today we are joined by charlotte haddad um she graduated from mctimony college just like i have um she's a few years ahead of me though and she's out in didcot working in the chiropractic clinic at the moment um she's here to give us some good resources tips and advice uh, firstly thank you charlotte for coming on the show wow thank you lewis for having me it's a pleasure <laughs> um so first of all i'd just like to ask you a little bit about your background in chiropractic why you got started um where you went to uni and kind of what you're doing now hmm I'm oh, sorry, I was drinking. That's okay. Um, <laughs> right, I started, well, initially it's weird because I think that chiropractic kind of found me in a way. Um, I was back in Italy and I was 15 and um, I was training. I don't know if you know about the um, circus training. So I was doing silks and the trapeze, and the circus, like all of those crazy things. I did not. Doing, I know you're into pole. You do a lot of your pole. Yeah, I'm doing now. pole dance now and I'm okay. doing contemporary dance now. Oh, cool. Um, but when I came to England, I wanted to continue to do the silks as well, but they're so expensive. So I was like, no, I'm not doing that. It's like 20, 20 or 30 pounds an hour. Oh, so, which is just too much to do twice a week. Yeah, um, for so sure. I do that. But it was, it was so much fun. And um, I was training really hard with that. I was doing it a lot. And um, one day doing a training, unfortunately, with the silks, you go quite high. Mm -hmm. And um, I got stuck halfway up there. And then I kind of fell down and I twisted my back kind of badly. And um, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't <laughs> nice. Since then, obviously, um, I couldn't really I had to stop for like a month doing trainings. Mm -hmm. And then I went back. And then when I started going back, I wasn't, I wasn't myself really. It was weird. I was just, um, I was behind all of the, the people I was training with. My coach was like, you Charlotte, you need to, oh, I can't, I can't, you can't do in the show again. Like it, it doesn't work out. So, and I was in pain as well. Obviously I was trying mm -hmm. to just mask it, but I was in pain. Mm -hmm. So um, I went to see physios and doctors. They kept giving me like painkillers and bear in mind, obviously my, my family is like, not really pill driven if, if mm -hmm. you know my meaning like yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're not really into that kind of or into natural yeah medicine, more yeah. my mom's like um kind of like she, she was called like the wheat the witch of um, <laughs> the town she always heals with herbs and and teas and stuff like that and amazing i love yeah, that she, she's like into all that kind of like she does as well some reiki and she you know like she reads a lot of like weird yeah. books and um you know like i think i i also saw some of your things about the water and the music you know relation mm -hmm. all these kind of things and yeah. it all comes from her and she was like oh charlotte there's um there's a new thing there's chiropractic and i was like mom what are you on about and i was 15 i was mm -hmm. a very stubborn teenager yeah. and I was like on a fight of everything my mom was saying I thought she was like really weird and I was like why can't my mom just fit in with like all the other mothers and be normal and I'm really glad she wasn't and she isn't <laughs> normal if you know but uh, she was like go and see this chiropractor I was like oh mom what is this anyway I ended up going and see this chiropractor and um, she was a well she's an amazing chiropractor and um, she does as well very um, light chiropractic. I don't know if you haven't heard of the NSA, Network Spinal Analysis yeah. Chiropractic. Mm. So it's very, very gentle chiropractic. Uh, it's kind of like a sister of BGI, mm -hmm. uh, Biogeometric inter Integration. And um, I went to see her and I went to, and when I was looking at how she was adjusting, so first of all, I walked into the studio and she had like, I think she's got 15 tables, one wow. after the other. It's a ginormous studio. It's beautiful. It's a Victorian building in the center of Turin in Italy. And um, just, I was like, wow, what, what is this place? And then it looked like really nice. There was like some soothing music, but it was like actually nice, like mm. some Greek music. I don't know. It was just really cool environment. And people were laying on these benches and they were like doing weird noises. Um, and I was like, what is this place? And I'm looking at my mom and I was like, oh, can you just, can we just get over this? <laughs> And then we went through the initial consultation. She saw my back. She saw that I was like very angry a bit at the world and stubborn. And 
she laid me down and I had my first adjustment and oh my god <laughs> like what what happened um I literally she um she was touching very very like lightly I think around my pelvis and after she left and she just she was just like staying there and all of a sudden I felt a huge urge of breathing in like I was like I don't have enough oxygen Mm. And I just started to breathe in deeply. And then at some, at some point, I felt like a pressure over my right shoulder. And she wasn't even touching my right shoulder. And I have no idea what happened. But after I had to go and see her for about 10 sessions. Mm -hmm. And after that, not only my pain went, so that was like, obviously, the first thing to go. Mm -hmm. But also, I started to feel stronger. I was quicker. I regained all of my flexibility that I lost throughout all the mm-hmm. months of recovery. And I was just like amazed by what happened. Um, but so was it at that point that you knew I want to do this? I, I, no, not, not yet. I didn't process it at that point at the moment yet, but it was, it really got me. I was like, I didn't take any pills. My mom didn't put any weird creams on me. <laughs> I, I didn't really change my way of eating. I didn't change my way of sleeping. What's going on? Mm. Um, it was really interesting. And um, then I just went and see her, I think once every two months, something like that, just for maintenance. And when I finished school, um, I was like, kind of, I wanted to travel. So I was like, and I didn't really know if I wanted to be, because I always wanted to come in England to study, mm. uh, but I didn't know really what to study or when to study. And I was a bit confused. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go and plug everything. I'm plug my brain and just go away um, as far as possible. So I picked Canada and I went away on my own for a year, just traveling, volunteering for charities. And I met amazing people. And when I came back, I think when I, when I was coming back to Italy, I realized how I missed my chiropractic adjustments because it was a year and where I did like my life, but I didn't have every two months, my adjustments that I used to have. Mm -hmm. And I was like, there was something missing in my life. And I was like, this is amazing. I need to know a bit more about this. And A, I need to go back to my chiropractor ASAP because I need an adjustment Mm -hmm. and I was really missing it. And then I was like, and what is this? Why, why do I feel this good? And bear in mind as well that since 15 till now, I'm 27. I haven't had any injuries happening to me. And I mean, I'm pretty crazy. I do a lot of things. <laughs> physically. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I go hiking. I don't I go climbing. I do po- contemporary dance, pole dance. And I never broke a bone. I never had any potential injuries since then. Um, now, I don't know whether it's because since then I, I had continuous chiropractic care mm. or not. Um, but that I think had a really positive impact on my life. And, um, and then after that, I was like, I came back and I was like, I want, I want to learn more about this, not just be passive and just obviously enjoy this thing, but I want to really want to understand it. And also I want as many people as possible to feel it as well. Cause I was trying to explain to my friends and to say like, why don't you go and try it? And they were like, mm, no, I don't know. Cause in Italy, no one knows about chiropractic. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's fairly new still there. It's not as here in England or in America or Canada at all, or even New Zealand. Um, in Italy, it's mainly physiotherapists. So whatever you have going on as a musculoskeletal issue, you would go to a physiotherapist. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's where I got sent to as well but unfortunately that didn't work um, and then that's when I decided to come over here in England and to start a journey to study chiropractic and since then I just loved every minute of it and I discovered also that obviously network spine analysis is a spectrum obviously of mm-hmm. um, the chiropractic but there's so much more that's just one road to to reach to reach the same target if that makes sense um but there's many beautiful roads to get to it to get to you wow that's such a lovely story i really mm. enjoyed that that was really nice i like <laughs> i was smiling the whole way through because even though we went to uni together like and we've spoke a few times i never knew this and i, I love learning these kind of things about people it's really interesting 
Yeah, it's I, I love yeah as well because I was listening to also previous um, episodes that you already uh, published and. I love to hear like bits that I didn't know about people that, like you said, like I knew for through work or knew uh, through uni, and I was like, wow, I like that that side of them, and yeah, it's um it's a lovely thing that you're doing. I think it's very useful for for students. That's so cool, and I really like that you had that insightful, meaningful reason to go into chiropractic. You'd experienced chiropractic firsthand the powers beyond pain as well like it's interesting how you linked it yes it helped with pain but you felt you yeah, were was, you're in optimal health yeah it was just like I don't know I feel like I keep saying like it was magical almost I was like this is magic and I felt crazy because I was like I was still stubborn I was like no I'm not gonna give right to my mother I'm not gonna say my mom was right and it's only like later on like probably when I was 20 I was like thank you mom thank you so much for bringing me there because honestly you were right and I was so wrong amazing um and so going through chiropractic school how did you find going through university like and are there any resources that you found let's say let's start off with like any books that either helped you academically or you as a person to grow into who you are now? Right, so um, through university, I have to say that I was very much, um, I would say academic at first, meaning that it's not like I was believing everything that the teachers were saying, but I was really into like, just trusting the process, if that always makes sense, because, mm-hmm. um, Going through uni, um, I met obviously different people and they were the ones that wanted to know it all. They were the ones that wanted to know already um, what type of techniques to do. Uh, They wanted to know um, already how they were gonna be in practice and they they already had ideas, which I'm sure that by the time they graduated, they changed um, because for sure Mm -hmm. mine changed again and again. Um, but I was more of the type of philosophy that you need the foundations and the building blocks that uni gives you to then grow into who you are. Yeah. Um, so when I went to uni, I literally just went into it full on. So biochemistry, neuroscience, uh, human anatomy and all, all mm-hmm. the lots really. And I went just just in and really absorbed everything and without asking too much, um, probably, you know, naive way, um, if you like, because I was just literally listening to what they had to tell um, in lectures. And sometimes I agreed and sometimes I didn't agree. Mm -hmm. But nonetheless, I was just like trying to get through the exams as best I could and just go forward, if that makes sense. And I remember meeting um, at that point, um, Sarah uh, Waller, and um, who she's the partner of Tom Waller. And um, we were in class together and I really straight away connected with her. And just like, really, she was more mature as well. She was older than me. So she had, uh, she was a bit more grounded, if that makes sense. Yeah. And. Um, I liked how she she was talking, the things that she was saying, and I felt kind of attracted by how she was explaining me things when I couldn't understand things. Mm-hmm. And um, and I straight away just went to her, and whenever I had doubts and things, I was just asking her. And the first thing I remember that I think because by being married to a chiropractor, Sarah mm-hmm. knew that she we had to go and see a lot of clinics, observe a lot of clinics and go to as many seminars as possible. So that's what she told me straight away. But remember, I was very stubborn and I think I still am, but I'm trying to work on that. <laughs> um, so when she said that, I was like, yeah, yeah. And then I looked at the prices and I was like, I'm not spending that money no. to go and listen to who? somebody that says that they're great at doing chiropractic. Yeah, whatever. I'll just continue doing my thing. So, and I ignored that advice, which please guys, if you're listening to this, go straight away. And the price that you're paying now, it's so cheap. 
I mean, now that I am gra I've graduated and I'm a full chiropractor, the prices is like four times that, if not more. Yeah, easily. For one seminar. Mm -hmm. And also, I don't have the availability anymore because I'm in clinic and I'm working. So I am, if you like, I'm, I have a schedule. So I don't have the freedom of saying, that's it. I'm going to that one and I'm taking this day and this day off and do whatever. When I, when you're a uni, you do have that lecture. You can do it. You can also miss a class and then catch up later if you, if you, if you want to. Mm -hmm. um, so that's very important. That's the one thing I, 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 well, Sarah did tell me and I had other people telling me straight away to go, but I ignored that advice until I was on my, I think late second year at uni. Um, at the end of my, yeah, second year at uni, I think I went on my first seminar, which was the um, UCA, the United Chiropractic Association Conference, that they do the annual uh, conference, which was brilliant. When I went, A, I met so many chiropractors from all over the world, and B, I had the opportunity to see what, how big the world is of chiropractic if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, so what I'm trying to say is that if someone gives you an advice mm -hmm. about something related to their experience, there's normally a reason why. And don't be stubborn like I was and ignoring that, that point because I think I lost some valuable experience for a whole, almost two years really, because... Technically, I only went for a lot of seminars throughout my third year and fourth year. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, my fourth year, the COVID pandemic hit. So uh, a lot of uh, conferences as well got cancelled. So I yeah. couldn't go. Um, so for me, I would say that the, the most important thing is connecting with as many people as you can. Talk to as many people people as well because really um people can explain their 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 points of view their experiences um and they can give you like little gems and little secrets uh, that can really help you um that was my my first thing and then when i started to go to seminars oh the world just opened for me it wasn't just anymore about the exam i mean I was everything changed it wasn't just anymore about passing the exam and doing as best as I could it was just I want to I want to finish this as quickly as possible so then I can start doing this craft because it's beautiful um but I didn't really understand it I just thought I was going back to school sort of thing at first um it's, it's interesting uh, I really like that because your first bit of advice as well what you were touching upon there is your best bit of advice is to listen to other people's advice <laughs> mm -hmm. you were saying how it's really vital there for like year one two three even year four students to listen to the advice that people even someone who's in the same year or the year above you who's just done a few more chiropractic things than you if they're if they've been exposed to more chiropractic as a whole Take their advice because there's a chance that they're a little bit further along on their journey than you are. Mm -hmm. And we're just trying to help you speed up that journey. That mm -hmm. is literally the sole purpose of this podcast is mm -hmm. listen to this advice. L please <laughs> listen yeah. to it. Like <laughs> that I'm yeah. begging people. And yeah, don't, don't be well, stubborn. <laughs> yeah, don't be stubborn. I am so stubborn. I am with you there. I'm so, so oh. stubborn. Yeah, I'm a Taurus <laughs> as well, if that has anything to do with it. But the, we're like, oh, oh yeah, you've we're got it super all. super <laughs> stubborn. Yeah, exactly. So it's interesting there because I was exactly the same. Year one and two, no conferences, no seminars. Year three, unfortunately, I caught the back end of a few. I went to Bax and then a few online sem like seminars and conferences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I regret so much not going to conferences in year one, year two. Yeah. taking control of wccs when you're just gifted it it's really interesting like yeah. and i'm and i'm now listening to everyone who comes on here and they're all saying go to seminars and conferences yeah. connect with people that is and then not only that like also the beauty of it is like when you're a student you have no idea of who you will be you have no idea everyone's talking about techniques and you don't really know 
what technique you you don't even know all the techniques that are out there i i don't even know all the techniques that are out mm -hmm. there yet there's so many mm -hmm. um and our technique is just a way of treating someone or adjusting someone and getting there from a different road from a different perspective looking at the body in a different way um but there's so many that it is very confusing so in my, my advice would be that by go, going to as many seminars as possible, but also that cover as many different techniques as possible, that is great because you see people doing their best thing and you can be like, oh, that's cool. I like what they're doing or hmm, don't really understand the analysis of this technique or mm -hmm. I don't really agree with the philosophy of this technique. So I think I'm going to leave it. But at least you've seen it. At least you've spent a whole two or three days with people that like it and you are a bit more aware of it. Um, I'm glad that I managed that COVID didn't hit before uh, my third year. So my third year was literally the year where I did them all. I I went from, um, well, the ones that I really, really enjoyed were uh, the Syntropy, which already been mentioned mm -hmm. previously on this um, podcast by other um, guests. Um, but honestly, Patrick and Aaron are amazing who are running the Syntropy um, course. It's just amazing. Have you been, Louis? I have not. No, I've not had the opportunity. Oh, oh you have to. <laughs> as soon as you can again i don't know if they, i think they will come back in england yeah, yeah um do them all do the module a b um occipital lift do them all because they're really really good and the beauty of what they teach um is that not many um, technique te techniques teach how um to look after the practitioner so us so a lot of techniques are just like how to deliver the best adjustment ever Mm -hmm. and how to help people uh, the most successfully way. But they also, I think some, forget that we are humans as well. And if you repeat day after day after day after day, a technique that is kind of heavy on your body, on your back, on your shoulders, on your wrists, mm -hmm. and you don't know what is the right height of the bench, and you end up slouching over the bench um it can be exhausting at the end of the day yes you can have the best intention of the world but you can be really exhausted at the end of the day and then slowly it can just drain you um and what i love about pat and patrick and aaron on of syntropy they really tackle how to adjust efficiently and quickly and beautifully without damaging yourself um so they give you like awesome tricks to calculate how to have the bench set up and also how to position the patient and use gravity, the forces that are around us, instead of you trying to lift and use your own muscles, which, like I said, if you treat um, hundreds of patients a week, can have an impact on your body. So oh, they yeah. are great. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, I would really advise them and suggest them. Um, and then, like I said, like I went... Um, I wanted to um, look a bit more into the um, BGI I mentioned earlier, the yeah. um, biodometric integration, which is an um, awesome technique as well. Um, Could you more... just summarize? Yeah, summarize what it is for those. Yeah, that, it's, what it um, have you been to any of uh, the BGI? I've, I've honestly, I tell you this, I've never been to a technique seminar in my life. Is it because you start, decided to do like some seminars? Um, and then COVID hit and then you exactly. were like, exactly it, it pretty much like I left it too late and then COVID hit and then nothing was happening in person. Mm -hmm. So I, by the time I was bothered to go to them, I missed out. Oh, that is, yeah. It's Just really try, I think that now that you're going to go, I think you're going to work with uh, Tom Waller. And yeah. yeah. Um, once you're going to go try to, I think he's going to put you through loads of seminars anyway because he's he's great. Yeah, um, exactly, exactly. But it's uh, it's really good to see as many and also as many different techniques as possible because um, it helps you understanding who you are 
and which one works best for you. And sometimes you like multiple ones. Mm. So then you can, you can use different techniques, right? You can use one because sometimes someone on the table will respond better to something else, or maybe they had something a bit more traumatic. So you have to be a bit more gentle or someone is, um, wants something a bit more intense, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, so you can use different, different ways, um, of, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's very, very fascinating. Um, so yeah, so basically the um, biogeometric integration and the NSA, which is the network spinal analysis, mm. they work um, more on the, it's very tonal. So it's a very light touch and it works more on the system of the body and the nervous system really, rather than doing, moving the bone if that makes sense so well, it's tone is the bridge between man the physical and man the spiritual mm -hmm. yeah it's it, yeah exactly so it's it's in between them but it's it's lighter if that makes sense and that's why i think it's harder for the majority of people out there like as clients to understand this um these techniques because they're just if you just do that the majority will be like oh, what have you done to me? Because if you're not good enough and you haven't connected with them, they're just like, oh, I've just spent 50 pounds for nothing, really. It's not even a massage, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but you can so integrate, it, yeah, you don't have to be a BGI practitioner and just do BGI. Exactly, Same as you, can, you don't have to do just McTimony or just diversified. Yeah, exactly, you can integrate them. And what I found that uh, I've learned as well into these... Um, with these two techniques is that it's beautiful because it works more with the breath mm -hmm. um which is so important because breath works with the diaphragm diaphragm it's connected to your back so not only the muscle when when you stop breathing normally and we all breathe through our chest instead of through our abdomen um and what happens is that our diaphragm gets really really constricted and that has an impact on our back ultimately um so what I normally tend to do is like people are overstressed or in the, they're in that fight or flight mode. Mm -hmm. um, and what you want to do is like calm them down and open up their system, see where the subluxations are, where the interference in the spine is and in the body is. And to see that you need to allow them to show you where, where that is. And they only show you once they open up to you and to allow them to open up these two techniques. I think they're beautiful to that, yeah to express yeah. that and then and then i tend to once they open up and i see where the subluxations and the interferences are then i go into it with different techniques um so i may use isentropy i may use uh something from what i, I learned with brett jones or um any diversify techniques mm -hmm. really that that work because they're beautiful and they relieve you as well it um, links really well to your connection point as well like your whole purpose is to connect to the person and you spent a lot of time learning about connection so 100%. it's really it's amazing it's really important yeah it's really important <clears throat> to connect with the person on the bench um and the, the, the person that you're serving um if there's not that connection and you're just like concentrating on on yourself rather than on them it's not going to be a good adjustment it's not going to be good for them mm. um that's what i've learned personally but i'm sure i've got much more to learn anyway that's brilliant. That's like a really good, lovely bit of advice. Um, in terms of like f physical resources, do you mm -hmm. have do you have any podcasts or books um, or something so like that that you would really recommend for any chiropractic students going through uni at the moment? Just uh, if there's a couple that really hit home for you. Yeah, so you. the two ones. Um, well, I really liked the uh, reality check book from uh, Heidi Hovick. Mm -hmm. um and that was a really good book because yeah. again i was a bit confused there's too many descriptions of what chiropractic is and it isn't and what the nervous system is and yes it is what they explain you at school but it's so much more um yeah. and i think Hadi hovick did that beautifully in her book um so that was like a tiny little yeah. book is you can eat it like in a <laughs> one day or two easily okay um a uh, podcast that I'm um, I'm currently still really enjoying is the Vitality Shift and Breaking the Underdog Curse yeah. Um, yeah. of um, Don McDonald. 
there's a really cool one um it's so long as well there's like so many episodes you can listen yeah. you can choose whatever you want and he's cool because he invites people from all over the world i mean yes it's more american canada but there's literally people from everywhere so that's it's really so cool good. um videos from um brett jones um videos from tim young videos from pat and aaron that keep teaching you um how to again that's a point that for me it's very important um that you need to feel good in yourself to be able to help others otherwise you're not going anywhere in terms of adjusting mm. yes you're adjusting thousands of people but if you're not feeling good you adjust them you just they're not gonna heal as nicely as they could potentially do um yeah that's something like for example i went i can't remember which seminar it was again but in one seminar, I remember that the question was asked to the crowd and they asked how many people have a morning routine? And um, I remember thinking, I, I don't. I mean, no. yes, we all do have a routine because we get up, we go to the toilets, we brush our teeth and shower. But Like a wellness that, routine or something exactly. like that. Exactly. Have we got any? And I was thinking, I was like, have I got any? Well, I was like, no, I don't. And... I, I learned through hearing what other people were, again, other people were saying um, that a lot of people had um, chiropractic before starting working. They had meditation. They had uh, stretching routines. Breath work, um, yeah. They had cold showers routine to wake up the body. Um, and they had all sorts or like um, jogging in the morning, like whatever it was, it, it was personal to them. And I was like, oh, that is so cool. I need to find something for me. And again, because I'm a dancer, I was like, I need to kind of like improve my flexibility anyway. So I was like, instead of like, to stay on top of that, let's stretch every morning for 10, 15 minutes. And um, I found a routine that it's quite easy. And since then, so it's been now uh, five years, mm -hmm. every morning when I wake up, I go to the toilets, do my washing and everything. And then before I get dressed, I stretch. And I stretch from head to toes. And that's because for me, it's the best way that then I can go into clinic and not feeling groggy or just mm. woken up or depending on coffee to wake myself up. I like to feeling good in myself to then go into clinic. And if I feel good, people, when they come into my room, they already sense how I'm feeling. Mm. There's that... I, like we call it the innate intelligence, like the soul or however we want to call it, that can sense that those things were very sensitive um, and you can pick up those emotions quite quickly. So if you're feeling rubbish and groggy and tired and a bit like fed up and you're just putting a nice face, they can mm -hmm. feel it. If you touch someone and you don't have the best intention, they can feel it. I got adjusted by someone that thought they were the best chiropractor in the world and I didn't like it. I got, I'm not saying that they hurt me, but I didn't like it. I didn't mm. want them to touch me again. <laughs> um, you need to be centered. And to do that, you need to do something um, that wakes you up and that makes you feel good for like not more than 10, 10 minutes because we don't have much time, not more than no. 10 minutes. Something um, that works for you. Exactly, as well. exactly. Like meditation yeah. might work for one person. Yoga exactly. might work for another, stretching, like exactly. anything. Anything could be, um, it could be like, I don't know, going for a nice walk in the morning. Um, anything that is personal, but to get to center yourself. And that's what Pat Patrick and Aaron call the drop in, dropping in, feeling how mm -hmm. you feel, who you are, where, where am I? Okay, I'm here. I'm awake and I'm present. And then you go on. I like that, being that's present. Good. That's good. Yeah, that's, uh, that's important. Yep. Yeah. Okay, now, my, uh, uh, <laughs> this is a good question, because everyone has a really interesting answer to this one. If you were to give a student, even yourself, looking back, like year one, year two, year three, one piece of advice, one sentence, what would you tell them? And what significance does that have? Like, what, why that one thing? Hmm. <laughs> uh if it was to me it would be don't be stubborn <laughs> don't be stubborn so keep <laughs> so okay so let's flip that on its head keep an open mind yeah 
keep an open mind and also trust in the process. So don't get fed up um, if you fail an exam, if you think that what they're teaching you is nonsense, because it's there for a reason. I think that we're all, when you come out of uni, it's easy to criticize what is, has been taught, but I think it has a purpose. There is a reason. Um, and, and it's part of the journey. You need to learn those things to then be able to learn further things in chiropractic. Yeah, um, trust your you education and trust what you know, because it is still four years to become a master exactly. of chiropractic. Like, exactly. it's like with any job, any university degree, you're not going to be a master in your field until you have gone out and got some experience outside of uni. Um, mm -hmm. So don't expect to come out being the best of the best in chiropractic, but we're trying to give you advice to become the best version of yourself by the time you finish university. Yeah, 100%, 100%. And trust, trust the process. You'll find who you want to be. You'll learn what you like and you'll stick to the mm. technique that you like and the philosophy you like, and you'll find it. Don't worry. Like I had no idea and and then one day I found SOT technique and I fell in love with it. And I love, and that's what I use now 85% of the time. Mm -hmm. And then I incorporate the other things because there isn't just one technique for me at this moment in my life, at this current, but I'm still trusting the process for myself as well. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to learn, what seminar I'm going to go to and who I'm going to listen. I'm going to be like, whoa, that's amazing. Actually, I want to go that way. You know, I think it's a, beautiful world the chiropractic world there's so much um you just need to sometimes just because there is so much you need to center yourself a bit more and trust the steps it's kind of like when you go hiking in a mountain and you look at the whole hill and you're just like oh my god i could never go to the top and you feel mm -hmm. out of breath your muscles ache mm -hmm. you're you're out of breath you're just struggling so much so what i say is look at the floor one step at a time and then without even realizing it, once you took a, like a rhythm, you find yourself at the top and you can enjoy the view. Amazing. Wow, what a lovely analogy. <laughs> I love that. That's a really nice place and some really amazing advice and resources there. I love that. And I can definitely be an advocate for the reality check book that you said. I've read that a few times. Mm -hmm. It's, it's cool, so it? good. It links, it really helps, helped me with my philosophy because it mm -hmm. added science to why I was feeling the way I was. Yeah. Everyone who goes on about vertebral subluxation, oh, it's quackery, it's uh, pseudoscience. Mm -hmm. It's not a real way. <laughs> it's not a real thing. Heidi Harvick just kind of comes in and slams this research on the table and goes, here it is. Chiropractic mm -hmm. is amazing. Here's why but adds it reinforces the philosophy of the vitalistic i say that in quotation marks like vitalistic chiropractor who adjusts vertebral subluxations and it's it, it's a really good book and so cheap for students at mctimony they have it for 10 pounds if you yeah. if you want to go buy it it's 10 pounds one of you buy it in a group of 10 of you and take it in turns to read it and pay one pound <laughs> each yeah that's a good idea yeah that's yeah? really good like in that's like my best tip as well <laughs> yeah cool. so easy yeah and then podcast there's so many i'm listening to one it's called the subtle art of not giving a fuck <laughs> Amazing. so nice as well like it just teaches you because i'm I, I feel like it's very easy as a student to get confused and just like oh i don't know there's too much and then you just end up not doing anything mm -hmm. just one step at a time just do what you do one day you'll find the right thing for you i think yeah. Um, but yeah, podcasts are free. So nice. You can listen to many people, the yeah. ones that you actually like them. You can go and stop them on Facebook. They normally accept your friendship and then you can just yeah. nag them like I'm doing. That's what <laughs> I'm so surprised by. Like I'm going around adding these like people that I really admire and look up yeah. to like, like Tim Young and Brett Jones. Yeah, exactly. And, and go for like, it. They're just accepting my friend requests and having chats. And I'm like, oh my goodness. Yeah. We, we hold them in such a limelight, but they're just normal people. They're here. We're all human. We're all, we're not, no one's special. We're all human. Some people have more experience. So, and then we have a bit less experience so we can just learn from them. And I think they're still learning from other people that have even more experience. And I think by talking, communicating and 
just really it's a big family mm. so the more we ask not being afraid of saying that you don't know that that you want to learn everyone will be available to telling mm. you um yeah that's uh, that's my okay. advice so good and um, that's a really nice place for us to wrap up the podcast if people want to get in touch with you or come and observe how can they do that I know you're moving soon so if you give like maybe yeah, where you so, are now and where you're going to as well yeah so I'm working currently at uh, Dicko so I'm working at the medical uh, it's on Broadway um I've been working there for a year but uh, it's time for me to move so as of January I'll be working at uh, the Newbury Chiropractic Centre Mm -hmm. and it's a great family clinic it's lovely i'm sure that uh jane jennings which is gonna she's gonna be my boss um will love to have people coming and observe so yeah if you just want to organize it just um you can contact me through instagram or facebook and i'll be more than happy to um yeah organize something with you guys thank you so much and thank you so much for coming on the podcast as well it's been a real pleasure Oh, my pleasure, Lewis. Thank you for this. That's really good. Great. And thank you everyone else for listening. And we hope you tune in next time.